Welcome to the School of Wordcraft and Wordmancy. This is Feedback Frenzy. Hello, I'm writer Greg, and welcome to the School of Worldcraft and Wordmancy Feedback Frenzy, where we're going to go through an article or uh, fiction that was submitted at wgc.bz slash submit. And if you'd like to have your content provided for a previous uh article or, or a future feedback frenzy please visit the site and we'll get into it now it is always a pleasure to have uh the works of arm e armstrong e double underscore armstrong and visiting the culinary punk world and we have visited this place many times before and look forward to getting into it again now uh the what was told to me is that this is a uh it's an intro to the Intro Culinary Punk article, and I feel like I'm missing a section on it. Okay, so we're just going to go through it, uh, critique it, and see, uh, and focus on the expansion when we get to the ABCDE evaluation. All right, so oh, no, I, let's let's just zoom out. Let's just zoom out. Okay, yes. All right, so we have that, we have this, we have sections, we have, okay. Uh, magic, world, okay, geography, magic, world, okay. Hmm, well, let's just, um, let's just dig into it. All right, Culinary Punk, a food-based RPG. Welcome to Culinary Punk. Are you loyal to the Queen Bee of Polynesia or the Pitmaster of Cimarron? You decide, you decide your flavor of heroics. Note, this article is currently very under construction. Please excuse the lorem ipsum where it appears. All right. Now, this is the comment that, okay, what the flambe is culinary punk? I opened this screen getting ready to record. I and my eyes were immediately drawn to that and I I had to apologize for reading ahead of time because I said, what the flambe is culinary punk? Okay, why I like this. This is the it really sets the tone of what this puntastic world has in front of us. So yeah. What the flambe is culinary punk. Okay. Uh, culinaria. Ooh, that tooltip. Very nice. And it's kind of moving. It's moving. It's going back. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, e. Armstrong. Awesome CSS person. Master? Mistress? I don't know. Uh... It was either flambe or fricassee. I think more people know the word flambe. Yeah, I, I think you picked the word. I, I like your choice. Okay, Culinaria is a world torn apart by differing tastes. Roving parties of adventurers tra traverse the triangular continent struggling to unite the heated kingdoms before emotions boil over. Hmm. In culinary punk, magic derives from food. Disagreements over the power of certain edibles have caused a split in the once peaceful land. Allegiances shattered into the seven main kingdoms that now stand, leaving small migratory groups feeling minced about choosing a side. Oh, the puns are coming quick and uh, fast and furious. Um... The, yeah, the emotions boil over the, um, uh, uh, yeah, feeling minced about choosing a side. Uh, yeah, front-loaded all the puns, yeah. It's time to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. You may be overdone now, but with some training, you'll be a supreme sub hoagie hero. Okay, I know that you're putting in a lot of puns. The fact that you did this cross out with the sub hoagie hero, I think that was an excellent choice, and here's why. I know what a sub is. Subway, 
you know, I know what a sub sandwich is. I'm kind of familiar with a hoagie, you know, a hoagie roll. You know, you can do that. When I think of a hero sandwich, I do not think of the sub the or a hoagie or whatever it may be may come. My initial thing RPG hero. I don't get the I would not get that pun. However, the hanging a lampshade on top of this I think is an excellent choice because you're allowing us to identify another pun that's in here. And see, I think I would have missed that pun, pun had you not done that. So I actually think that that was um, well done. Well done. And Jess is getting hungry. They'll be back later. You're not going to be the only one who gets hungry on this. All right. Culinary Punk is a fork and sorcery RPG setting for D&D 5e with high magic use and light steampunk elements. Again, fork and sorcery. Gotta love it. Food and magic is intertwined in this setting, but you won't need any food knowledge to play. Suggestions for menus and pairings per subclass will be available soon. Full campaign setting information and character creation coming soon. Excellent. Want to help build this world? Join us on Twitch. All right. See that again. That is a fun thing. Inviting people to your stream. Cross promotion. Uh, now, I presume this is to look like a rolling pin. Uh, I'm guessing. Um, I'd almost make this bigger. I wanted it to roll, but it didn't look good. Okay. But see, I'd almost make this a bigger font. Not this big. Maybe, maybe that, maybe, maybe that big. I don't know. I would just, I think that, I mean, this is your main advertisement to come to your Twitch channel to gain subscribers, to gain, get people invited. This is a call to action. Um, I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, because you don't want, I like that you have the rolling pin. I like that you have a different color. Um, yeah. Okay. One time, Tanfar thought he'd sneak a little cayenne into the soup. Granny certainly didn't appreciate the fiery burp she had for the rest of the day. <laughs> Simmerunian. Okay, similar. I, I must, must have missed a mouth-watering menu of magic. Okay, the the magic of culinary punk is all based around food. Family recipes carry on more than tradition; they pass down ancient magics learned by ancestors and carefully tweaked throughout the centuries. A stew isn't simply a delicious combination of ingredients; it it, it's a handcrafted mix designed for a specific magical output. In a world where ghost peppers give you fire breathing, amateur chefs face new obstacles, and master and masters of flavor are king. Masters of flavor. Okay. So, what's your preferred method of magic? Do you have a sweet tooth, or do you like to spice things up? Perhaps you're looking to tour the continent and taste the world. The choice is yours. Very nice. Sander, Methylene. I'm not sure. I think this is your just your um, standard. Okay, yeah. Very nice. I'm almost concerned that people would get lose that section. Okay, let's control Z. Because you have so many things in boxes, so many things in highlights and you know things like here. Would people loot get lost seeing that? Would people skip that over? Oh, it's it's not in a box. Oh, it's not colored. Oh, it's not animated. Would people skip that? Maybe. But, I mean, it's not the most critical information, but it is flavor. 
I mean, it's <laughs> flavor. Sorry. Okay. Most common magics. Sugar magic is used by the impatient. Culinar cul culinarians look for a quick fix. Fix. Audibles, edibles created with sugar magic are not long-lasting, but can be effective in a pinch. Herbs. Often considered the boring vanilla option, herbs contain the easiest yet longest magic to obtain and utilize. Herb magic can be distilled through drying methods to increase potency. Ooh, nice. Uh, spices. A harsh, a harsh, difficult magic to master. Spice is often misused by the average culinarian. Spice wizards have become adept at using complex, complex combinations of spice, spices to achieve great feats. Interest. Okay. See, I like the sugars. I like the herbs. I like the distinction that you have between here. And why do they disappear when I roll over them? Oh, they fade back in. Hmm. I'm glad it comes back eventually. But interesting. Okay. My first question here that does not, should not be answered here. Uh, what's the difference between a herb and a spice? What makes something an herb? What makes something a spice? Uh, capsaicin? No, is that? No. What? Oh, what's the chemical? The heat, I hate you chemical, the peppers have. But is cinnamon a spice? Or is cinnamon an herb? Because it's tree bark. It's not a fruit. Like a vanilla pod. That's a fruit. But is it a spice? See, and that's why you shouldn't... I. Too much detail for this page here, but just, I love the world. <clears throat> Household magic. Food magic is an everyday necessity in the world of culinaria. Family meals. Families gather three times a day to create and partake in magical meals imbued with family tradition. Most often, quick meals. Most often crafted by individuals, these single-serve meals are easy on-the-go, magical fuel. You are right, capsaicin, but the actual difference in herbs are leafy and spices are seeds. Oh. Okay, herbs are leafy, spices are seeds. Okay. So then what's Cinnamon. It's a bark. It's uh, okay. Uh, Culinaria is a continent powered by steam. Whether you're um, herbs, leaves, spices, not leaves. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> Culinary is a continent powered by steam. Whether you're talking about spaghetti train down the eastern coastline or chasing after a grub forge, you'll find yourself engulfed in steam power. Excellent. Ta taking culinarians from coast to coast, the spaghetti train is a steam engine and carbohydrate dispersal system. Grub Forge, wandering groups of me mechanized chefs on wheels. The Grub Forged are a colorful sight to see when, while traveling. Most often in groups of three or four, the Grub Forged will take rest in a city for a few days, collecting ingredients and learning new recipes before moving on to the next. They can be counted on in, counted on in certain cities for particular events. Okay. Usually when I think of something forged, like war forged or grub forged, I'm just feeling like it's an, uh, an artificial intelligent construct. Whereas the spaghetti train is, I don't know if that is 
sentient or artificially intelligent or something like that. That just, to me, sounds like a regular steam-powered train that we had in the 1800s. But the, so I just, hmm. But see, again, is that too much information for the front page? I don't, yeah. Uh, household technology. Steam-powered has become the most common form of energy in culinaria. Yep, they're based, they're based on food trucks powered by steam. Okay. Um, do they have drivers then? Because here, you say grub forged will take rest in a city for a, a few days. Or um, grub forged chefs, grub forged drivers, uh, or the grudge forged itself. That's because that's the confusion I have. I guess that's it. You're using grub forged as the proper noun without reference to any other uh, softened. I love that new word. Um, they are the. <laughs> they're war forged with big uh, cabooses. Okay. Well, so. Okay, so I guess, yeah. That's weird. A grub... Okay. Sorry. So a grub forge goes into a city, eats all the ingredients, and travels the country pooping out meals for other people. I mean, food goes in, they process the food, and there's an output. I mean, it's not like there's people inside the, the grub forge that is processing the food. I mean, it eats ingredients and it poops out human consumable food. So, yeah, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to take it this way. I don't know what comes over me when I read a culinary punk article that just brings out the uh <laughs> the weirdness. <laughs> okay, the world of culinary punk. A brief history. They also have pans set up like drumline percussionists in front. Oh, that's cool. I'd rather hear a drumline every day any day if you had a, a, a good drum line versus that music that the ice cream truck does, I would take a drum line every day of the week. Not much is known about the ancient civilizations of culinary punk. Ruins have been discovered within certain kingdoms, but knowledge is not generally shared between kingdoms. Okay. Uh, again, using the same noun twice in the same sentence but but oh you could say but specific knowledge is not generally shared okay you know because we can assume that the knowledge is discovered within certain kingdoms and it's not generally shared so I think um, it, but the but that um, but spe yeah, I just put, but specific knowledge is not generally shared, period, and get rid of that. It is rumored the shape of the main continent was based on an ancient belief system that, based, ba on a ba ancient belief system, but the truth has become a mystery in recent centuries. Um, I, I do like the, the ancient mystery. It could, it could, I don't. Does the food food pyramid has, uh, dot gov? Oh, have they they've replaced it with my plate? Okay, so there isn't. Okay, I just thought it would be it, it could be funny to see a, have a a a link to the. You know, United States government food pyramid or something, but it, they must have taken that down. Nowadays, the kingdoms find themselves in minor turmoil. Disagreements on balanced diets and proper nutrition have thrust a knife between the once friendly parties. Uh, Polynesia and Cimarron are currently on the cusp of war. Lactatia has been pushing the pit masters of Cimarron to marry his daughter. 
the sauces to the p pollen prints, the sauces. Okay, Simaroon, the pit master of Simaroon, the sauces. Okay, uh, the sauces is a title for a princess. Okay, uh, yeah, and having the sauces both capitalized that, you know, does. That was good because it helped me realize that that is a proper title and not specifically t sauces. But the sauces to the pollen prince, an attempt for an alliance, but Polynesia has concern about Simaroon's leadership. Okay. Yeah, see, see that's good. Where By picking the right word and proper pron pronunciation, not pron punctuation, Proper capitalization can really convey a lot for those who are willing to read it specifically. I think having them on different lines is a bit weird. Might add a word or two to push that onto the same line. Oh. This, oh, the sauces. Well. You could just create that as a separate paragraph. Because Lactasia, I don't know who Lactasia is. Um, is it a King Lactasia, Queen Lactasia, Prime Minister Lactasia? You could, like, because here we don't have, well, yeah, okay, Lactasia is the Dairy Kingdom, okay, but you're referring to it as the kingdom, but here you're pushing the pit master of Simaroon. So you're having a country forcing an individual. For parallelism, and um, it would be that who, I mean, because Lactasia could be pushing Simaroon. That would make it more equivalent. But the king of Lactasia, you know, the Dairy King. Are you sure? I mean, is Dairy Queen? Is that too on the nose? The Dairy Queen of Lactasia? Is that is that is that too on the nose? I don't know. But yeah, okay. So the Dairy King of Lactasia has been pushing the pitmaster of Cimarron. Okay, yeah, and just put that all on its own. The Dairy King is in charge of the government where the Dairy Queen is in charge of the um, the magicians or something. I, I, I mean, it's just right there. It's just right there. I just don't want you to get in trouble with said Dairy Queen. <laughs> okay, Polynesia. The Queen Bee Polynesia is protected by the swarm. Okay. Nectar Fighter, Swarm Knight. Oh, okay, so now we're going to kind of get into the um, classes, I think. Swarm Knight, death by a million stings. A Swarm Knight is trained to be quick on their feet with their blade. With poison-tipped weapons, any enemy is smart to quickly flee battle. Okay. Pitmaster, Simaroon is protected by the Order of the Tong. BBQ Paladin, Oath of the Grill Paladin. Religiously grill your enemies. When taking the oath of the grill, a paladin swears to defend all that is spiced and meaty. Great food and divine parties are of importance. A sm smoker. Um, because you have a grill. A grill... There could be that, if you just hear me out, would there be, there could be an alliance between, but there's also people who like to smoke their meats versus people who like to grill their meats. There's got to be a distinction there. Because if you have the art, the oath of the grill paladin, or the oath, uh, and then you could have the oath of the um, smoker. Yeah, because I know there are some people like Traeger, Traeger girls. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, subclasses. That's that's what it is. 
Su Sushimia, the fishmonger. Sushimia is protected by the swordfish. Seafood druid, sea circle of seafood. The power of the ocean is in, in your hands, Lorm Ibsen. Okay. Some places will have multiple subclasses. There you could totally be another smoked subclass. Yeah, you have the apple wood, the cherry wood, the pellets versus the propane versus... <laughs> I have some friends who are really into some uh, barbecue. Chef, the riceroy. Chef is protected by pastorarchy, bakery domain. Give us this day our daily bread. Awesome. Grain cleric. Okay. All right. Some people, and these people can be ignored. And uh, I love that you're using a Bible reference here. You're, you're quoting the Lord's Prayer. I do not take this as sacrilegious. I have a sense of humor. Um, I think this is great. Okay, give us this day our daily bread. You can I mean, it pokes fun, but I don't think it. I don't think it's mockery. I like this. Um, the. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, I like that. Okay. The, you know, uh, Kidopoi had a wonderful uh, opportunity to do, you know, appreciation versus appropriation and stuff like that. And I think if, I think someone who would take offense at the, oh, oh okay, why I brought up Kidopoi's um, video is it, it talk, it's about, generalizing stuff like that. And I, but I, the, I don't know if it's appropriate. I just wanted to shout out Kiddo Poi. It was a wonderful video. You need to go watch it um, on the World Anvil stream. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, it's very appropriate. It works really well. And if you think that's offensive, you need to grow a funny bone. Sorry. That's my, as a Bible thumping, cis gender middle aged white man, I think that's funny. I think that's great. Okay. Herbaceum, the Duke of Seed. Her Herbaceum is protected by pepper brands. Seedy Bard. <laughs> Armstrong, hey, you want to see something seedy? <laughs> oh, the seedy bard wears a trench coat filled with seed packets. Oh, man. Okay. Well, okay, so the first, the second thing, let's be honest with my first laugh. My, my first thought was the laugh, okay? My, my brain went there. Uh, the second thing uh, I think about that in our previous conversation, what's the difference between herbs and seeds? You have this place called her herbaceum. Okay, those are leaves, right? But then it's the Duke of Seed. Uh, so that, and then the pepper brands. So I'm a little. <clears throat> I have a CSS pick that changes on hover for the CD Bard. Okay, I'm hovering. Oops. Um, oh, the pick isn't there yet. Okay, oh yes, Herb Herbaceum is a mix of both, but I can totally see where the confusion may have to reconsider. The pick isn't there yet, okay. Well, I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm just pointing it out because I could definitely see with herbaceum it being multi-class, leaf versus non-leaf, and, and they're all in the same thing because it's all about 
uh, growing stuff. It's the power of, you know, your druids. I can understand how you could have a seafood druid, um, an animal-based druid, but I could also see a druid coming from herbaceum because it is also, um, it's, it's growing. So it's like the difference, is there a sea druid? I don't know. When I think of druid, I think of plants. Is there a sea-based druid? There basically can be. Yeah, this is basically the fruits and veggies section of the food pyramid. Okay. Right. Okay, the frizzle kingdom. The deep frizer. <laughs> the frizzle kingdom is protected by Laura Mipsum. Got it. Okay, nothing. Fry snatcher. Deep fry rogue. Uh oh. Deep fry rogue. Okay, the fry snatcher. Nothing is safe around these foodies. Got it. Nope. No water druid that I know of. Officially, that is. Well, yeah. Well, you can think of like Avatar the Last Airbender, uh, Kara the Waterbender. You know, that. that's... Or Aquaman, Mermaids. Well, Mermaids imply... Um, yeah, at Atlanteans. Like, let's go back to the map. Net, uh, promise, dream, like dairy, barbecue, realm of the beer monks. Okay, so we don't have a... Yeah, because the Tsushima, Tsushimiya is, could just be underwater people. Yes, I played a water genasi circle of spores druid, and it was so fun. I just love the water druid feel. Okay. And it doesn't have to be officially accepted. I mean, you can have your own class. You have plenty of your other own classes. Yeah, uh, a water druid. Yeah, totally. Lactasia, the dairy king. Lactasia is pro protected by the Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Dairy Ranger, Rancher Conclave, Circle of the Land, Coast or Swamp. Uh, the Rootinous Tootinous Ranger, Brave the Northern Frontier on your trusty steed. As a Rancher Ranger, the battlefield becomes a little more than herding sheep. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. All right. Sugar cane and isles. Oh, societies a la carte. Oh, okay. So we have the kingdoms. Nice. Uh, so, so, okay. The sugar cane and isles. The, the ginger baroness. The sugar cane and isles protected by gummy golems. Got it. The porter. The beer monks. The beer monks are protected by Lorem Ipsen. The sugar warlock. Muffin man patron. Do you know the Muffin Man? Root Beer Barbarian. I'm not drunk. I'm tipsy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Armstrong, if you ever decide to have a, a world, a, a Twitch streaming or one shot or hex series, can I call dibs on the root beer barbarian? <laughs> I, I I think it would be fun to play a monk, and then the root, but there's root beer. I love that the root beer barbarian. Play your handbook, okay, and stuff like that. Okay, okay. This oh, I just enjoy the creativity of this world, the puns, the tongue in cheek, the 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 great thing. Uh, of all of this stuff. I think it was really well, well, okay, awesome. Your world is awesome. It's fun. It's flavorful. It has puns that work on many different levels. I think it would, uh, I think it works. I mean, some of these jokes go over your head. Some of them go straight into your face. And, but, okay, I guess they go over my head. Okay. But, 
the I, again the creativity of this world the confusion again talking about the herbs and spices um and sugars because those could be found in all different things and i guess you could get really super nitty picky about you know how that a appears um the technology um carbohydrate dispersal system okay what creates i don't know that that may just need to be something else like how do they make their steam because you could make steam in a lot of different ways the most common is burning a fire under a under a tank of water that then powers a steam engine like traditional steam locomotives here on real world earth but then you have steampunk that are these magical crystals that you plug into it, into a, a device that then runs it. So the, I guess the interesting thing about steampunk, is it literal steam or is it like a magical rock or magical essence or uh, something like that? Yes, that will be a whole own article. Yeah, whole spaghetti cooking and dispersal system. Okay. Um, yeah, this being an introductory article, because yes, I have so many questions and I would love to do um, diet, deep dives. I would love to uh, discuss these more in length um, as they are, uh, I think you, it has such rich potential with it. As far as an introduction, I think this did really well. It's very eye-catching. I don't know, hmm, I wonder, do you really need the technology section here on the page? Because I like it being there, so, because you know it's a, you know, the fork and sorcery, and it does, it helps people know that it is steampunk, ish so it's not so that you automatically know yeah yeah i'm totally fine losing it i only put it because i felt like i had to for the steampunk yes exactly so i think it does need to be there you know you have the magic is that is that like a header one F12. Okay, okay, yeah, that's your header one. Okay. Um, F12. I don't know, I think that should be, maybe this should be promoted to the same level. It's good to have the peach. Is that peach, salmon, or coral? I'm not sure. Uh, salmon. Okay, I like this salmon section here. That the because uh, it's it's food related. It has to be salmon. Um, I do like that, but yeah, I would I would almost make it because you have the mass magic, and you have the technology. I think that it should be this should be kept, but it should be promoted to be as equal as the world of culinary punk and the wor magic of culinary punk. Yeah, boost it up to the, so that way you know that it is mad, subliminally, subconsciously, people would see that the magic and technology are at equal footing. You could, in this, well, you do say, and light steampunk elements. Magic. You could maybe put a short paragraph, because you have this empty space right here. Well, I don't know. Anyway, you could 
maybe put a small paragraph in here talking about maybe something steampunky. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. Maybe. <sighs> Hey, Dazzle Cat. Yeah, I know. It's that steampunk thing that's messing me up. Yeah, but it's, it's such a critical part, I think. Because it's culinary punk. You can't take the punk out of it. Because if... I mean, yeah, you... If there is some way to make the cul the punk, because we have the magic and technology, culinary and punk. Culinary is the magic, punk is the technology. And just if that was able, to, I mean, so I think there needs to be a, um, a paragraph here to enter, to, to bring the punk up to equal standing as the culinary important to the world and how it works. I think I just need to play around with it and try out that section. If you, yeah. Yeah, so I guess my, my, my recommendation is to bring it up in importance, bring that section up and refer to it in, uh, in, in, the mode, in there. Because um, we talk a lot about the culinary, but we're not talking a lot about the punk. So I guess that is my suggestion on that. All right. Ah. <sighs> So thank you so much. It is always a joy to read uh, one of your articles here. And thank you so much, E. Armstrong, if you would like to, if you, gentle viewer, would like to jump into the world of culinary punk and its puns and buy, uh, buyer beware, uh, <laughs> go ahead and jump in the, and the the world of culinary punk with E. Armstrong. So thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to have your world building article or 1500 words of fiction critique, please visit WGCWZ slash submit where you can submit your content for a future feedback frenzy. Thank you so much. Have a great one and keep on writing. Thanks for watching this feedback frenzy. Be sure to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Writer Greg offers coaching sessions to help bring your world to life, create compelling stories, and accomplish your creative goals. Please visit wgc.bz coaching for more details.